promise. Breast cancer, you know, we have to find a cure. There will be a cure for breast cancer. So we don't have to worry about our daughters. I am a survivor. Yes, you can. You, you'll fight it. There has to be a cure within our lifetime. And until we do, we will walk. We will run. We will fight for the cure for breast cancer. Yay! Thank you. In 1991, Philadelphia heard a call deep within its women to unmask a killer. Its name is breast cancer. Built on the promise of one sister to another, Susan G. Coleman for the Cure, the global leader in fighting breast cancer, introduced a unique idea, a race for the cure. In Philadelphia, it would be staged from the steps of the art museum on Mother's Day. We looked around, it must have been 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and wondered if anyone would come. That morning, the sun rose on 1,983 people determined to change the face of breast cancer. The mystery would be unveiled with education, the fear would be met with treatment, and the hope would live in the picture of survivors arm in arm, a pink battalion of courage that would say, together, we can find a cure. Isabel Linton raced for her older sister one year, and then the next, Isabel walked in celebration of her own life. I just had a mammogram two weeks ago, and it was suspicious, and I had a biopsy that was malignant, and I had a mastectomy this past Tuesday. But you're here today. I'm here today, and I'm strong, and I'm tough, and I'm going to be fine. 17 years later, Isabel and her sister Monica are survivors who find their place under an archway of pink balloons each year. I always look to see what the signs on their, their, their back or on the front in celebration of or in memory of. And to go there and just see all the pink hats and the shirts, I think is so inspiring because there's life, life, life. The promise of life has driven the Philadelphia affiliate of Coleman for the Cure to push harder and reach further. Since 1991, the race for the cure has grown to 40,000 runners and walkers, plus another 75,000 family and friends, those who hold that lifeline of love and support. And with people comes money and care, especially for those women and men who can't find it anywhere else. Executive Director Elaine Groveman has been there from the beginning. When I look back over 20 years, We've been able to provide over 100,000 free mammograms. But along with that comes treatment that's necessary. And so we've had hospitals that have joined with us in providing that treatment that is needed. We have been able to give out grants locally over the past 20 years for $45 million, which I think is amazing. We have contributed to National another $15 million. Komen is the largest private funder of breast cancer research in the world. At last count, in 2009 alone, $100 million was awarded for research. And as scientists study, women run for themselves and for their daughters. Sandra Folzer raced like the champion that she is. It's emotional, yeah. The first year we, we did this race, mom was like a month after chemo, and we made these shirts, and all her friends surrounded her with angel shirts, and um, they gave her a 20% chance with chemo. And later, year after year, Sandra has been the first survivor to cross the finish line, each time wearing the heart of a warrior. On race day, mixed with the sweat are the tears. 20-year survivor Peggy Ashner has been there. They're crying because they made it. Some of them are not making it yet. I'm a 10-year survivor. I'm an 11-year survivor. And in those words of survival are hope. Hope found in every step, pounding out the Susan G. Komen for the Cure mission to ensure quality care, to energize science, to save lives, and to end breast cancer forever. We are racing toward the finish line without one life to spare.